Hi friends, I am making this video specifically for parents who have kids that play instruments. And I thought I would talk about a really hot topic and that is how do you get your kids to practice? So many people I know are frustrated that their kids rarely practice, uh, especially without nagging them to get their instruments out. And you might be bummed you just spent a lot of money on in purchasing an instrument that your, your child rarely even touches. Um, or you might be upset you got them private lessons and they're still not practicing. So do not fear you're not alone. Uh, I find actually that this is really common and that all kids love music. I've never met a, a child that doesn't love music, but most kids don't like to practice. I repeat, most kids don't like to practice and that's totally normal. Practicing is a skill. The reason most kids don't like to practice is they really don't know how to practice. So I wanted to share some, some tips that I find very helpful. I use these with my own children. And by the way, I battle my own kids with practicing at times, but I think we can make things a lot more enjoyable for them and for us. So here are some tips. You can also visit my website at trombone101.com. And if you look under blogs, there's a whole article that I wrote on uh, tips for parents to get your kids to practice. So the first tip that I would encourage everybody is to make practicing as fun as possible. Now let's face it, practicing isn't always fun, but I think the more that parents can help be there and you know inspire their kids and, and make it fun, you could have your children make funny sounds on the instrument or imitate different sounds like of animals. There's all different kinds of things, but I think the more we make it fun, the much greater chance of them getting their instruments out. It's just like anything. If you enjoy doing something, it's not so so much work and you actually will do it on your own. So that's, that's the first thing. I think it's important to have a, a room in your house designated for practicing. Um, Sometimes a child's bedroom might not be the best place because you really can't see what they're doing. But I like having our kids practice in our living room. It's a nice big room. It sounds good. And I can be there when I'm cooking dinner or I'm, you know, doing something in the living room and I get to, to hear them play. And I can give them positive reinforcement just saying, hey, great job. You know, things like that I think are really, really helpful. So also I think one thing that's really helpful is treating practicing like it's homework. So scheduling, just like you would homework, scheduling a time of day where, where your child gets their instrument out and practices. Now, the important thing is it's quality over quantity. So I would rather have my, my child practice the best they can for 10 minutes rather than an hour. You get a lot more done. And uh, again, the, the faster kids get better, the more they're going to want to practice. They'll see the benefits of it. So that, that's one thing. And I also think consistency. A little every day uh, is much better. For example, if you did, say, 15 minutes a day every day versus twice a week for an hour each time, you're actually going to improve faster doing it consistently every day for 15 minutes. And as kids get better at practicing, what always happens is their time start increasing. So it's just, I think, great small chunks of high quality, but consistently each day. Um, the fourth thing is I think it's really great to encourage your kids to share music with other people. And this is so important for a number of things. First of all, I love the word share. Just like if you had a snack, you would share it with other children um, or you'd share your time with, with family and friends. It's really important that kids get a time to share their music. And this is a really important time for non-judgment. No matter how they play, you want it to be a really great experience. And it's, I think, a really a beautiful thing to encourage giving music as a gift rather than being forced to play. So I think the more that we call it sharing your music, um, I think that's a, a much more positive thing for, for kids. Um, I think another thing is just having your kids play for family, relatives, um, and friends as often as possible. This is so unbelievable to help with 
getting good at performing for people and, and not being so anxious. The reason most people get anxious is they don't get to do it very often. So I would encourage you, have your child play for people. And the more they get reinforcement, positive reinforcement back, they're going to want to do it more and more, which also can increase in practicing. Um, a great thing to do, especially post-COVID, is to invite classmates over. Encourage friends that play instruments in maybe band or orchestra and encourage them to come over. Buy duets, buy sheet music that they can play together. Uh, if you can help form a group, a chamber group, that's so incredible. It's, it's so much fun for kids, and especially that their friends are doing it, they'll do it too. So I encourage you to invite people over to play. Uh, here's one that I think is huge, and that it is make practicing a reward, not a punishment. I hear some parents where they get angry at their child, they come home and they go, go upstairs and practice. We just made that such a negative. So we wanna make sure that you get rewarded in a positive way, especially maybe if, if you didn't even um, encourage them to practice, they did it on their own. Maybe, it, maybe a child gets like a special movie night or pizza or something like that. But I think rewarding kids for the positive is, is a really powerful tool to get your, your kids to practice more. Uh, listen to great music as often as possible. And I think a really important message is that with, with effort, you could sound like that. And I think the more you make this a family thing that you just all listen, the more they absorb things and the faster it's gonna come out through their playing. And sometimes you might see somebody just identifies with a musician and their style or, or for whatever reason, but it becomes a, a really positive idol and they start imitating that person. So that's a really wonderful way. Uh, one of the greatest ways to help your child if you really want them to, to become great practicers and love music is get private lessons. And I think a really good private teacher will inspire your, stu your child and, and also give them really specific things to practice. Like I said before, kids don't know how to practice. So a good teacher is going to teach them how to practice. And then I would make sure that your child has, you know, basic things like a music stand. Uh, a lot of kids will just put their music like on a couch or a chair and they develop really bad posture. So get a music stand, um, a tuner, a metronome, which if, you're, if your child has a cell phone, you can get all these apps for free even. Uh, and, and they're really helpful tools. Uh, a recording device is super helpful. So, you know, again, you could do that on a cell phone as well. But be able to hear what they sound like it's humbling, but it's an incredible tool. It will help them improve really quickly. And um, I think also attending master classes can be really helpful. Seeing people live and hearing, you know, different messages that they have is amazing to help students improve really quickly. Um, and then the, the last thing I would say that I think is a really great way to make practicing a lot more fun is using play along CDs or um, accompaniment programs like apps like uh, Smart Music or there's Music Minus One. Um, or there's a lot of books that come with a CD that you can play along with. And I think that's an amazing way if, you're, if your child's by themselves, they can just play along with that. And, um, and also I would encourage you to buy really fun music that your, your child loves. So you might, love Disney melodies or, you know, the latest Pixar themes, or it could be a, a solo that you heard or John Philip Sousa, you heard a March, but buying music that your kids love is a really powerful way just to get them to get their instrument out. And once you create this, this positive habit, it will last their whole life and they'll be more and more encouraged to practice. I can't believe I'll say this now, or I'm saying this now, but I absolutely love to practice. And I, I wasn't that way when I was in middle school and high school. I, uh, I, I had a really hard time because I didn't know how. So I hope you find this helpful and best of luck.